So the 99 has been reaching out to me and they say, Souls, what's going on? This demon's role only have love for the one percenters, not all motorcycle clubs. And this is the holy grail of MC culture. So today I take you to the Bronx, New York, and we sit down with Bishop, the president of the Uptown Riders MC and get into it on this episode of Demon's Row TV. And no, yeah, we ghosting, baby. Shout out to the ghosts and the ghost sets. Welcome to Demons Row TV, the holy grail of MC culture, where we cover everything motorcycle and motorcycle club involved. I'm Sos the Ghost. I'm your host for the evening, and I just want to let it be known I'm here for the whole entire motorcycle and motorcycle club culture. It's not just one percenters, all clubs a welcome here and we're gonna sit down with all variants of clubs today i'm gonna take you to the bronx new york my hometown and we're gonna sit down with the uptown riders mc don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button and let's get into it first of all thanks for sitting down with me bishop they're ready so tell me tell me a little bit about you you know we're in the bronx my hometown what part of the bronx you from where you were born and stuff like that well i'm from uptown of course. I grew up mostly in Co-op City. Co-op City? Yeah, about, yeah, like eight, nine years old. Oh, okay. So like always coming down to Harlem, seeing the bikes, seeing the bikes all up and down Co-op City is like that, you know? So that's the type of shit that we see growing up, always wanted to get fresh like that. I grew up down on the other side, the Cade Ave on Gun Hill. Okay. Yeah, two or fifth down the block from Gun Hill. I got a lot of family over there. Oh yeah? Yeah, a lot of family. That's what's up. Oh yeah. How is it growing up out here he said uptown, like on one, two fifth? No, nah, uptown, like the Bronx, like White Plains Road, Gun Hill Road. Oh, okay. So Co op City, so we all the way up here by Baychester Avenue, things like that. Did you see clubs or was it just like the big homies, like? No, nah, not really clubs, like just old dude, we knew riding and shit like that. Like when we came up, like about 16, 17, Rough Riders, pop out, what was that like, Lady Mob, you know what I'm saying? So I'm about like 19, so that whole, you know what I'm saying, shit pop up, so. The bikes was always part of the culture, like from growing up, you know what I'm saying? So what was your first bike? Well, I rode late from a 626. Oh, 626? Ultimate 626, yeah. And what do you ride now? I ride a CBR 1000. CBR 1000? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do y'all stunt and do all the craziness, or y'all more? Not with it. Really, not over here, two wheels on the ground. Some of my brothers stunt, but yeah, that's not really the basis of what we'll be about, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, some of the brothers. So what was your vision in the creation of Uptown Riders MC, like, how did that all come about, the beginning story? Well, my brother Nico, he kind of really set it up, you know? So, like, his his cousin is uh, Redbone, the founder. For years, you know, pushing him, because the club had kind of, you know, with, you know, brothers got older, they kind of put the colors down for a second. And so, um, he kind of brought him back, telling his cousin, like, y'all got a team up here, you know what I'm saying? We do what I think when you're riding. Because we've been hanging out since, like, I've been out with Nico since about 2014. 2014, 2013, around that time, riding with them, chilling, you know, just hanging out, having a good time, fucking with the chicks, you know what I'm saying? So we used to always talk shit, like, if we're gonna be covered, then we're gonna be then we're gonna be fresh out of But, you know, like, I didn't know his cousin was really that, that guy like that, you know what I'm saying? I'm, yeah, he really founded a club. So one day he called me up and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm doing the club thing. And I'm like, f out of here, dog, club shit. He's like, nah, for real, we're gonna do this shit, yo. For real, we talk about this shit, I'm like, playing. So I come around and he had brothers with him, you know what I'm saying? Some of the founders with that from the new chapter, the new, you know what I'm saying, new Upset Riders, which was Boo, and say my brother Boo, my brother Tal, you know what I'm saying? And he said, yo, we're gonna do it, you know what I'm saying? So we had our five. And uh, we started it from there. It was like October 2020, and we kind of started getting it together, you know what I'm saying? So so what was that like in the beginning, like first, you know, seeing the other clubs, like were you already part of the scene? Cause you, you were all riding or was it like- yeah. We knew a lot of people that were in clubs. Yeah. So it kind of was like kind of easy for us in terms of like ingratiating ourselves into him and yeah. culture into the circuit. Yeah. So like I knew brothers from Hood and, you know what I'm saying, other clubs like that, that, yeah, hung around. You know what I'm saying? And um, so we knew 
what the culture was about. Yeah, in terms of that, right? So, so were you solo, or did you wind up joining like a coalition or something like that? At some point, solo. We were solo. Like I said, we we knew other clubs. We were cool other clubs. We had, you know, what I'm saying like, but um, we were solo. We just came up. We went to our own thing because we were about like having a good time and doing community service. We wanted to bring that back to the game in terms of doing, you know, things for the community and like, you know, what I'm saying like having a good time and. Just, you know what I'm saying, being, being ourselves and telling you just being loose uptown, being fly, just having a good time on the bikes and, you know? Yeah. Regular shit. So is that what Uptown Riders is all about? Like just brothers hanging out, having a good time and that type of time? No, we mean, we're really about the ride. Like we really love to ride. We really brothers that love and enjoy it and, and do what they fly to mean to you, right? Like that's important to us, you know? Like the party and everything like that, that, that comes with it, right? But yeah, really, I, I think it's Ryder. We love to ride. We have a, a club that really likes like, hitting the pavement, going to different events, and, you know what I'm saying, even going state to state, you know what I'm saying, doing different things, Jersey, Connecticut. Yeah. Just came back from NC. We had a great time out there, you know what I'm saying? So that's what Was it about. another club you were visiting, or was it your club out there? Well, we went to go visit our, our North Carolina shop that I just opened up. Oh, okay. you know what I'm saying? So we uh, went to go bless them, and if they like that, it. So you guys are in a lot of different states. Well, just two right now. Just two of them and in North Carolina, Raleigh, North Carolina, and, and Bronx, New York. We have two chapters. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that's so good on. I talk with my brothers about this sometimes, and it's no knock on bigger clubs, but we were talking about how, like, when it's smaller, it's easy to keep it tight, you know? When you get too national, a lot of politics get involved. How do you guys navigate through that, you know, like, keep the brotherhood strong and not let the politics you know, you know, break you apart. Like what happens with a lot of clubs, you know? Well, we small, like you said. So we really come from the same neighborhood, a lot of us, you know what I'm saying? And we really was with each other for a long time. So this ain't nothing really new. Like we, if we took these cuts off right now, we still ride together, right? Like we still really do them guys. Like, so you look back on my Instagram and shit like that, you see us riding together, like before this cut shit. So that's how we really keep it like that, right? Like there's no ego in this shit. Like, you don't really matter to us who's the president, who's the vice president. Like, we all move as one, like, you know what I'm saying? So that's how we move as a team, you know? So I joke with some friends about how bad the roads are in New York and the potholes and all that. And a lot of people from other states that I'm cool with, they don't understand, if they haven't visited out here, how rough the roads is. Tell these people how it is riding in the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's crazy. Like, I done had back rims at least... I don't know how many so a lot of brothers I know in Brooklyn turned to the uh the six fifty KLRs because of the roads. Yeah. They turned to the those those uh big dirt bikes because of the bad roads. So wow. the roads is crazy. I don't hit both have a pile. I know brothers that are went down hitting tires on a highway. Both type of crazy shit. Like, yeah, the, the roads Do you have like certain kind of rules because of how crazy people drive? Like the way when you're riding together, like going somewhere in New York, you know how cars are just swerving in and out. I always say New York and California, they swear they got the best drivers and they got the worst drivers ever, bro. They're just moving in and out. They'll kill you, you know? So do you have certain rules so when you're riding where, you know, you protect, you know, the pack from like crazy drivers and stuff like that? Well, we got our road captain, you know, of course, he tries to keep everything together, keep us together. And actually, us riding together the pack, that's how we try to stay safe. So we try to keep the pack tight and make sure we stay together. So this way, nobody can't really get between that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you try to really, you know, put it in. When you ride yeah. tight, it's a lot better, you know what I mean, for the yeah. situation I am. So that's how I try to keep it tight in that, in that regard. A lot of people ask about East Coast clubs. What happens with the club in the winter? Like, what is the everyday like in the winter? Because we have, you know, like if you're in California or whatever, it doesn't get as cold as it does here. So, like, what's a winter like for MC out here for the people that, you know, because our, our base is broad, you know? Right, right. So it's like, I love this because I haven't really sat down with much people from where I'm from. Okay. So that's why I want them to know about the Bronx and the way we live, you know? So out here in the wintertime, it's a lot of, like, bike nights, right? So it'll be yeah. a lot of bike nights, a lot of things going on. So different clubs got shit going on every single night. And a lot of, you'd be surprised, a lot of people ride throughout the season, throughout yeah. the year. There's a lot of all-year riders out here. You'll be surprised. You throw in the red, people pull up, especially, you know, the one percenters and stuff like that. They'll yeah. pull up on, on tours. And no, i seen the one percenters pull up 20 degree weather on tours to an event we had right here and Bobo Snapchat, you know? So 
Yeah, it's 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 the, it's really the same. Like I said, it's more partying, but not a lot changed. People still pop out. You see people at the events, like not much change. It's not many bikes, but yeah, people still come up. Do you have females in your club or? Oh no, not right now. No females. Oh okay, not right now. Can you tell me a little bit about you know the meaning of the Uptown Riders logo, like their insignia? like what it means to you and, and like how it was formed? Well, the original logo was formed with uh, three bikes, uh, with the three, well, the three of the founders. So uh, they was into like drag racing and shit like that, like Redbone, Redbone, Wild Child, Taboo, brothers like that. So they were into drag racing. So the original cut um, had three of their bikes on it. And one even had the drag bars on it. I'll send you a photo there. It's for all oh, okay. Yeah, so. They had the three bikes on it, and that was that represented to them like the racing, because they felt like that the strongest bikes in the Bronx at that time. Oh yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. They stood on that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They stood on that. They stood on. So are they still around now? Or? Absolutely. So oh. Red Bull, who's the original founder of everything, right? Uh, he actually started up the North Carolina chapter. Oh um, yeah. So he's still he's still active. He's still an active member. Um, was still you know around doing his thing, and all. Uh, he's still real influential. So. What's your advice to somebody, somebody running that wants to get into the game and they want to join the RMC? Like, what would be like your advice to them as far as like joining a motorcycle club? Because I advocate that I came from the gang world. You know, I I was crip for a lot of years, and, and I learned a lot of you know, rough lessons on the street from it. And you know, in the Bronx, the Bronx was a lot of bloods, so it was it was it was tough, you know. And um, I advocate that clubs is a cooler way to get that camaraderie in comparison to like joining a gang or something. Cause you gotta, you gotta have time with your bros and stuff, you know? So what do you think for somebody new, a real person wanting to join the MC, what's some advice that you have? Well, first you gotta like, probably like, definitely hang around first, right? Definitely have to hang around, hang around the people who see if there's something that you would want to get into. Uh, when I came out, I actually hung out with that MC a lot and I didn't really think that was for me at, at that time, you know? So it's yeah. been a while to like, kind of see what you've seen, like in terms of wanting to be a person that's like a role model, things like that, want to at least give, you know, kids the use some guidance. Mm -hmm. I would think this would be a better way, but to get into it, being to be instructive, right? Like, because that's what this thing come with. Like even in the 99, it come with a lot of structure, still level of rules, the dudes, things like that, right? So yeah. understand that, you know what I'm saying? You got to come with a level of structure and it does help you know, bring the best out of some, you know, some people, right? So, yeah. again, I, I, went, I would suggest they hang around first. Do they do their history, do their knowledge? I would say look up different clubs, different MCs, try to see what else, you know what I'm saying? Like, try to get to a, a circuit event, you know yeah. what I'm saying, and things like that. But what you're saying is how I looked at it, how me and my brother Nico looked at it. Like, we wanted to be that MC that was, that was cool, right? So yeah. growing up, there was a lot of MCs that seemed cool. Yeah. Like, initially, I didn't like the vest. I didn't like the, I didn't like it at first. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, but then as I got to understand it and then my history and else to the culture, I'm like, well, that shit is fire. Yeah. And, and I, I was doing a stuff for I was like, you know what? I could be a father side like that. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I seen a big George Floyd rally one time, man. Like, it was about a thousand bikes out there. And I'm like, pan, all this shit. Like, and this the motherfucker in a bike club, right? Like, he was just a regular guy who got both thousand. So imagine he did that to a biker. Imagine George Floyd was in one of these MCs that got thousands of members. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What type of title would be on it? They move somebody like that out, right? Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I thought about that. And I was like, you know what? It'll be dope to be a part of something that could be bigger than oneself going forward. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like I said, I got down with my brother Nico, and I said, listen, man, we're only gonna do things for the community and things like that. I'll, you know, I'll f with you. And that's all I got. And you, that's how we started this. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy because I knew you was in the Bronx. Yeah. So I was tapping in with you on your platform. And I'm saying, I said, you yeah. have no name guys up there. Yeah. What's oh, up with yeah. that? Like, why did you bring 99s up on the platform? <laughs> I haven't, like, I don't know why. Like, honestly, I don't mind again. The 99s on the platform. You talk about the 99s, you give the props to the 99s, but I've never seen you. You know what's so you funny? Like, it was a platform that talk out, talk out, talk. Yeah, like, it's crazy because a lot of people say that, like, why you only have, like, Diamond Club members. I think it's just the people I function with the most. Okay. okay. But I mean, I'm cool. I'm, like, down to sit with everybody. Like, I want to give everybody light right. and just show the different layers of the culture. Right. So it's good, like, that we're doing this, you know? I mean, definitely, I was like, the Bronx, I got to do it. You know, like, I wanted to do that. Like, I got to, I got to, I made a tap of my and just, yeah, yeah. 
you know, get and show everybody love, you know? Yeah, because I want to show the whole culture. It's true, I remember, um, one of the dudes from Set Magazine told me, he was like, you got that outlaw thing, you know, on Smash. And I was like, I wasn't looking at it like that. I was looking at it like, I want the whole culture to have love and, and show what it's like, you know? So he opened my mind up a little bit like, damn, I'm getting too much in a box. Right. And I don't I don't never want to be in a box, you know? Like when I watch this stuff, they don't it don't come across too much like a box, but the you know, more of the people you talk to and stuff like that, I see I seen it. But you know, I said, let me reach out, cause like I said, because you're from the Bronx. Yeah. And like I listened to what you pop. I knew you were from the cater. Yeah. Said, from the hood. I said, I'm gonna hit I said, I'm gonna see what this stuff for uptown. Yeah, for sure. Like, and then you reach back out. That's what's up. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, man. We appreciate that. It's, yeah, nah, I love it. It's just like, y'all from where I'm from. So this yeah. is like, you know, I love it, you know? Yeah. Nah, I do we, it. We're OD neutral clubs, so we got like a lot of like love, you know what I'm saying? So we get a lot of love and shit like that. Yeah. You've seen the page, right? You went through. Yeah, yeah. You see what we be doing. I've seen y'all around for years, like, you know. Or, yeah, definitely. Okay, okay. That's definitely. what's up here. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah. We used to go to like, um, the Bazaar. Alizora, yeah, you you used to go over there, right? Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like people like we f like that we go there and support like yeah. So we go there all the time and support and shit like that. Yeah, Alizora is becoming like a kind of like a little little mecca in a way. So, so like like when you get like for the ninety nines, when you get to that level, you doing Alizora. Yeah, so like we on our way there, we but you back that. Hmm? Yeah, it's a big like, spot. There. It's a big spot. There, I, don't, I, don't I, know. Club, I know clubs that said they sold 3,000 tickets. You know what we got to do? We got to do some collaboration. Oh, yeah. And do something yeah, in the Bronx. Okay. Bring it home. I'm with it. Yeah, you got you got my mind. Like, yeah, we got to do something out here. Like, but we talked about the ride. Dog, yeah. I, you know, yeah. Discussed it. I said, you're going to do that. Action. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think I'm going to go, I'm I'm go to like a big dirt bike, like the uh, African twin. My brother's <laughs> over here on baggers and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. want to do the bagger. Dude, everybody, yeah, I swear it's like a progression. Like everybody, the I put I put Riley the team leader, bro. Yeah, I would agree. I I love I love something comfortable, and I put my shit. I can hear my music. I, I still want it for a work bike, but I definitely want to be able to come. You ride that. You wear my uh, he tell them shit. Yeah, we go. Yeah, there we go. Here we go. Yeah, but hey, there we go. Let's you see y'all. Here we go. I've been doing again fifteen years. I've been here. I'm I'm, I'm older with the season. I I I don't even stay in the day. I was sick, bro. I don't, I don't like reason so like this whole thing. This is my favorite person to ride right here. He, he, he got me riding the way I, I ride today. Red. Yeah, man, I had to ride away him and shit like watching him. Brothers like like my brother town. Right. Oh, soft tail slim. So I say, well, yeah. hey, but what you started with? I had a a star striker. Okay. I never rode a street bike. Really? See, so I never rode a cruiser. So at the end of the day, so like for me, I rode a a, a ninja, a regular ninja one thousand. Yeah. It felt okay, but it felt a little weird. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm already tapped into the. Like when you're going on long rides, yeah, it get a little bit annoying, but yeah, how is that long rides on the sport? Long rides on the sports bike is weird, right? So like yeah. you get these weird cramps in your thighs sometime, and I'm going to do it. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> it's a way you. It's a way you crash down. It's a way you. It's a way you gotta crash down. You gotta get into a comfortable spot, and you gotta just kind of zone out and, and ride it out. And you gotta go to a high gear. Go to a high gear. Cruise it out. We gotta get a, you gotta find a comfortable position. It's not the best thing in the world. You get there a day earlier though, because of how fast y'all can go with them. But see, the thing about it, when you go on dumb fast, the dumb low, that shit is like uncomfortable. The fact that you, like, you can't go 170 for an oh, hour, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. it feels weird after a while. You know, that's a young red kid. Yeah. I know the bunch of deer. Nah, he right though. He's right. Now you right. He's right. That was very funny. They said that we all never did live in that restriction for hours. Yeah. That long, that I was still as a kid, that had your palm, that freshen the body weight on your palm. But if you, when you riding long distance like that, you're supposed to be riding with your legs. Right, and you're supposed to be riding with your hands, you're supposed to be free. Right. So you let your hands free. You, you know what I'm saying? You gotta just, you gotta relax. That's what I mean. Wow, if you tense enough the whole ride, oh yeah, it's over. You know what I'm Have you ever, well, Mitchell, have you ever rode a cruiser though? Just like sat on one and rode one? Nah, I don't look. Never? 
I might get turned out, right? He's gonna, he gonna get on one and then might get turned out. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. You finally be the type though that said you love the sport bike so much. You probably get like a glob, but still keep your sport bike. Like I would get one. Of the, I like the ones with the straight bars. I ain't gonna hold you. The ones that got the straight bars that give me sport bike vibes, right? Like, team uh, T Boss. Yeah, I like. Yeah, that. yeah, that is a sport bike. But yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I like that. Like you know what I'm saying. So, like I said, I like the African swing. I like the G. Oh, the GS 1300. Da, da, da. That street might only the homes um, the dual sport from BMW. I like that. Shit. Yeah. So what's the temperature like with the Harleys out here now? Because are more people yeah, getting on them? With them? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. With them. Because I know for the longest New York was like I would say like ninety percent sport bike. Really? You saying right now like if you was to give like a it's, a, it's probably like sixty forty like sixty one. Think about it. The girls are like jumping on uh, on the sports bikes. It's removable for them. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's like for them. So, like like I said, a lot of brothers in Brooklyn, they ride those KLRs and different brothers ride, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the dirt bike scene is crazy out here. You know that. Like, the earth we use. Who do you think get more girls? Cruisers or street bikes? That's 50-50. Uh-huh. That's 50-50. 50-50? Yeah, because I go with the age. You know, honestly, I think I think on school bikes, bro. Like, I feel like, I feel like girls ask me to jump on a sport bike more. I don't know if uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I'm gonna say fifty fifty because I know a lot of girls that wouldn't get on the sport bike and they'll jump on the cruiser. Oh uh, like they'll be like, nah. Like and then again, you got the joints too. When you talk about age group, right? Like the younger joints girl would jump on the sport bike. Younger joints, yeah. All the joints, they want they want to relax. Sure. They want to sure. safe. They want to have music, like my brother said, they want to the music, they want to chill. They don't yeah. white line it. Sure, sure. So and they're all that shit. They want to get big comfortable. Yeah, I agree with that. Definitely. So, I think it's like for me to do that. Yeah. So anything you want to say to the people before we wrap it up? You know, you could follow us at, at Uptown Riders underscore BX. Um, you got the Facebook page at Uptown Riders MC. TikTok, Uptown Riders. Uh, we got our anniversary coming up. June 24th. That's going to be crazy. You know, okay. Happen to the page for that. Yeah, got a big ride out coming up. We gonna tap in about that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah we just you know we just uptown riders doing our thing. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, just representing the culture, respecting the culture. You know what I'm saying? And show loves to all the MCs out there, like 99s and the one. Just tell me. We do. Thanks for having me.